Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So let us uh, come to the last uh, portion of this uh, performance and thrust all this. So we have uh, looked at uh, in details this um, uh, different thrust coefficient and uh, different efficiency level and then we looked at turbo jet turbo prop and the other factors which can uh, really impact the performance parameter. So now just uh, we would like to connect between the aircraft performance and the propulsion system. So, what we have looked at is the to some extent the performance in terms of um, the propulsion system like how much fuel is going to be consumed and due to the fuel consumption how far it can go or uh, with the endurance limit of the uh, all this. So, that is uh, where we go actually. So, we look at this uh, last uh, portion of the again this is something you can think about performance, uh, but this is uh, making a connections between um, so the connection between aircraft performance and propulsion system. So, what we have looked at is this one, this quantity, but now this is the one which you want to look at now, so that these two are kind of connected and one can see how these are kind of affecting. So, again we are assuming the uh, level flight condition. So, if you recall what we talk about in the level flight that if this is the aircraft then in level flight this is how thrust is going to be uh, working, this is the direction of the weight, this is lift and this is weight. Uh, so, obviously when it is in the level flight condition then the thrust force is balanced with the drag force and the lift is balanced with the weight of the body. So, any thrust which is available in excess, so that would be overcome the drag can be applied to accelerate the, accelerate the vehicle. So, that is going to increase the kinetic energy or uh, so what you can see when this talking about this level flight. So, this uh, the thrust which is when we talk about that this means the thrust which is available in excess of that required to overcome the drag. Uh, so, that this can be applied to accelerate the vehicle. So, that means increasing the kinetic energy or to cause the vehicle to climb up that is increasing the potential energy. So, this is increasing the potential energy. Okay. So, to maximize the time allowed or the endurance. So, to maximize endurance or time allowed for a fixed quantity of energy, uh, let us say for fixed quantity of fuel, it is necessary to minimize the rate of energy uses. So, that means the power required which is drag into flight velocity and so and also to maximize 
the range necessary to minimize L by D for a given weight or for a given weight for a given weight to minimize drag. So, these are the two important criteria that one hand we would like to maximize the endurance, so that the and that is possible for a given amount of fuel and the other hand we would like to minimize maximize the range. So, that to ma maximize the range we have to minimize the level by D or for a given weight to minimize drag. Now, we have vehicle drag. So, look at those component. So, there are two component of that one is the parasitic drag, the other one is the induced drag. Okay. So, so this parasitic drag is proportional to the flight velocity square okay, or b square and the part which is in uh, this induced drag or this is uh, drag due to leap, drag due to lift that decreases in proportion to the inverse of the flight velocity. So, that means this also the flight. So, this is 1 by v. So, that means what happens if you look at this let us say v the flight speed and this is the actual drag or rather aircraft drag. So, with flight velocity parasitic drag will increase. So, it is goes like that. So, this is parasitic one which is proportional to v square and induced drag would be 1 by v square. So, this will come down like this. So, this is induced drag which is 1 by v square. So, in between to compensate that the total drag will go like this. So, that is the total drag. So, these are the different component of the drag. Now, what we have C d is C no no d naught plus C L square by pi e e r, where L is half rho v square s C L, d is half rho v square s C d is the wing efficiency factor, s is the area and then rho density C L and C D is the drag and this coefficient. So, what we can write then that um, drag is half rho v square is C D naught plus L square by half rho v square is 1 by pi E A r. So, one thing to just to mention A r is the uh, aspect ratio. Okay. So, now what we get 
is that uh, now we can write half rho v square is C D 0, um, then we get plus w square by half rho v square is 1 by pi e a r. So, since at level flight l and w they are same. Now, to the minimum drag condition is our interest. So, we have to, to minimize drag. Uh, so, for a given weight it can occurs at the condition of the maximum. So, this occurs at the condition of maximum leap to drag ratio. So, d is L d by L which is d by L w c d by c l. Okay. Now, we can find out maximum leap to drag ratio by setting d c l c d naught plus c l square by pi e a r by c l to be 0. So, this is to for maximum and what we can find that from here C L minimum drag is pi E A R C D naught and C D minimum drag is 2 C D naught. So, what it gives us C L by C D max is half root pi e a r by c d naught and we get the flight speed for minimum drag condition is root over w by half rho s c l mean drag which is essentially 4 w by a square 1 by rho square C D naught pi E A R that is 1 by 4. So, that is what you get that is the for the minimum drag condition what could be the flight uh, velocity and uh, the things like that. Now, we can find out how much power would be required. So, now we can look at the um, propulsion system requirement. So, to maintain the steady level flight. So, this is from uh, propulsion system requirement what we get T required would be drag and power required would be T required into velocity which is D into V. So, what we have power required would be half rho V square is C D naught plus W square by half rho V s 1 by pi E aspect ratio. So, again if you look at the sort of an this is flight speed of V and this is power required P required. So, this changes with and this goes like. So, this curve is V sort of cube, this is 1 by V. So, my power required would lie like this. So, this is my P required the actual. 
So, this is a typical power required curve for of an aircraft and that is how now the velocity for minimum power is obtained. So, the velocity for minimum power is obtained by taking the derivative of the equation for pre required with respect to v and setting it to equal to 0. So, when you take that that means this means so we will take d d v by p required to be 0 and to find out that velocity which will. So, one can do the maths here we are not going into that calculation because it would be quite straightforward. So, this is p required condition would be 4 by 3 w by s 1 by rho square c d naught 1 by pi e e r that is 1 by 4. So, as we will see in the quickly that uh, maximum endurance occurs when the minimum power is used to maintain the steady level flight. So, that means the maximum endurance that will be obtained when minimum power is used to maintain the level flight. Okay. And the maximum range that is the distance travelled. So, maximum range will be obtained when, when the aircraft is flown at at the most aerodynamically efficient condition. Okay. So, that is maximum C L by C D. So, now we find out that aircraft endurance where now for a given amount of fuel for a given fuel what we the maximum endurance or the time is obtained for the flight condition corresponding to the minimum rate of energy or pre a power required the minimum power required. So, we can find out the aerodynamic co configuration which provides the minimum energy expenditure. So, to do that we will again come back to this uh, and this is what we can write due to level flight and power is w c d by c l v. So, where v is root over w by half rho is c l. So, that gives us power would be uh, w q by half rho s into c d by c l to the power 3 by 2. Okay. So, here this goes 3 by 2 half 
rho C L half and C D by C L 3 by 2. So, the minimum power required, so minimum power required or maximum endurance occurs when C L by 2 by C D is a maximum. So, that means this quantity the inverse quantity is maximum. So, with them we can do some little bit of algebra here and arrived an expression for the maximum endurance. So, for uh, max endurance we can set like d d c l of c d naught c l square by pi e a r c l by 3 by 2 which is 0. And what we will find from here? So, you can do this much. So, c l for minimum power which is root over 3 pi e a r c d naught and C D for minimum power would be 4 C D naught and C L by C D for mean power would be root over 3 pi E A R by 16 C D naught and at the same time V for minimum power would be uh, like square root of w by half rho s c l minimum power and if we put back the c l minimum power this will get us 4 by 3 w by s square 1 by rho square 1 by c d naught 1 by pi e air whole to the power 1 by 4. So, we get the minimum velocity and all this. So, the minimum power or the maximum endurance condition occurs at a speed which is roughly this uh, roughly 3 to the power 1 by 4 76 percent of the minimum drag or maximum range condition and the corresponding leap to drag ratio would be roughly show the uh, 86 percent or something like that. So, if we look at that curve like uh, what we have again flight velocity p this is so this will go like that so power required and So, this is power required minimum C L by C D max and this is the slope of P required by V which is V by D. So, this is a relationship between maximum endurance and maximum range. So, this is relation C between maximum endurance and max lift. So, continuing what we get that d minimum power is w 16 by 3 pi e a r which is root. So, this can be substituted 
into d w by d t which is m dot f into g that is minus t m dot f g by t that is minus t by specific impulse which is minus d by i s p. So, it says that for maximum endurance what we get d w by d t is minus w by i s p 16 by 3 c d naught by pi e a r to the power half. So, now one can integrate this one to get the assuming the so assuming i s p to be constant. So, what we get t max is i s p c d naught by pi e a r which is minus half ln w initial by w final. So, that is what we get. Now, there is one more uh, condition that will take the climbing flight. So, climbing flight condition. So, here we can say that the if aircraft is like this the free body diagram let us say this is theta or let us uh, put like that uh, let us say this is theta this is thrust and this goes the height. So, this is L, this is drag and this is weight. So, any excess in power beyond that is required to overcome the drag will cause the vehicle increase its kinetic or potential energy. So, we consider this by the uh, by this case by resolving the forces into different direction of the flight and equating with the acceleration. So, this essentially the force balance of aircraft in climbing flight. So, what we get L minus w cos theta is w by g v d theta by d t, where v d theta by d t is the acceleration normal to flight path and t minus d minus w sin theta this would be w by g d v by d t where d v by d t is the acceleration uh, tangent to flight path. So, the change in height of the vehicle or the rate of climb which is r by c. So, that is we can write that this is the change in height. So, this would be v sin theta v minus t by d w minus v by g d v by d t. So, we can write this in a form T v minus d v equals to w d h by d t plus d d t of half w by g v square. So, which is means p power available minus power required is w d h by d t plus d t by half v square. See in other words one can say that that excess power should be change in potential energy plus change in 
kinetic energy. So, now for steady climbing flight, what we see that this R by C would be V T by D W, which is P avail minus P required by W. And the time to climb would be T would be H 1 H 2 by D H R by C, where P avail is eta propeller efficiency into P shaft. For example, for example, P required is D into V. So, the power available is a function of propulsion system. So, it means the P avail is a function of propulsion system, flight velocity, altitude. So, um, altitude etcetera. Typically, it takes, it takes a form such that uh, like uh, this could be like which is power, this is flight speed v. So, this goes like this, this comes like this. So, this is probably the, this is the power required curve, this is p available curve and this is the shortest time to climb is where p avail minus p required is maximum. So, this is a typical behavior of um, power available as a function of flight speed. So, that means the shortest time to climb it will occur at flight velocity where, so this would be the corresponding flight velocity for uh, t shortest. So, that means at that particular velocity your p available minus p required this difference is also maximum and that would take the time to climb flight. So, that is pretty much uh, gives you an idea about uh, like um, so, first we looked at the all this endurance uh, range and all this in terms of the propulsion system where the fuel is consumed and all this and this portion of the discussion at least the today's discussion would give you a fair amount of idea how the um, aircraft uh, um, uh, endurance and the range they are connected with the propulsion system and that pretty much uh, that is what we would like to discuss on this performance first and we will continue the discussion on the other topics in the next lecture.